Now we come to the particle physics example. Uh, we have the standard uh, picture of, um, which is of course not a real picture, because it's really showing things on the ground. It superimposes on the map of um, the link between France and Switzerland. This actually crosses the, the border. Uh, it has, uh, we have here, the initial acceleration is done here. The protons and antiprotons are then injected into these rings. And they're collided at various places. You can see where the rings cross with the protons and antiprotons. One, two, three, four. And there, these are the halls where the different experiments. We see CMS Atlas, which are the two general purpose experiments. LHC B and Atlas, which are more special purpose and somewhat smaller data sizes. Um, so now we note here that there's 27 kilometers around this ring. And it's actually at the depth of 175 meters at its deepest. Um, so the data is uh, the collisions happen here along the, at these sites here. There are these huge apparatus which are giant by any reasonable standards, which are which take the data. They record the results of the collisions. Those uh, that data is written out to, to disk. It's analyzed by a special large local cluster to select uh, the more interesting events, and those more interesting events go on for detailed analysis. These are huge, these are huge examples of global science. Then the CMS, one of, one of the two um, general purpose uh, experiments, uh, the other is of course Atlas, has 3,600 participants, 183 institutions in 38 countries. Wow, that's, uh, I used to work in this field. We had 30 people in our experiment, and I found that pretty big. And one of the reasons I left that field is I thought working, working with 30 people was not so easy. But now they have 3,600 people, so obviously I was a bit, I, I was a bit impetuous in those days. Um, <clears throat> so this now goes a little more detail in the um, actual analysis. Um, so we have to analyze this data that's done through uh, one of the major resources is the LHC grid, which has 350,000 calls running and two million jobs per day. The LHC analysis is organized into these three tiers, uh, which are the basically CERN is sort of tier zero. Tier one is uh, in the, sort of in the country. Tier one in the US is a Fermilab uh, in Illinois. And there's a tier one in um, three other places in Europe. And then lots and lots of tier twos. And then tier three is basically your local workstation. We have around 15 petabytes of data and um, 200 petabytes, 15 petabytes of data per year, 200 petabytes total. And here's some data about an uh, Atlas experiment in 2012 at eight petabytes of tape. 10 petabytes of tier one disk. And I, I guess actually this slide here about uh, the US tier ones is not correct. It's, it's, it misses out some. There is a tier one also at Brookhaven. And tier two centers have 12 petabytes in total. And this is just one experiment Atlas. CMS has a similar architecture and similar sizes. Notice that uh, this information again involves just not just raw data, it also involves simulations, which are used to be able to analyze the, the, the uh, understand the data analysis and quantify the errors in that analysis. And about, there's almost an equal amount of data from Monte Carlo, which are the simulations that there are from the real experiment. Um, so it points out here that um, the, the, you know, the accelerators are increasing in power, but the, the Moore's law is sort of slowed down and has now become core law, not, um, not speed law. And um, so that requires new challenges. And uh, there's also the usual issue of power consumption and so on. Uh, I would say that um, it's not so obvious to me that this field is not as challenged as some other fields. Because they can just increase the size of the number of calls. And maybe they can even do some quicker pre-analysis to be able to isolate those, ex 
those events that need the full analysis. And um, they certainly probably do need to read the, I mean, the software. And this, you know, the planning for the software for this um, um, discovery of the Higgs happened uh, 10 years before the actual Higgs was discovered. So this is a huge effort. And all, at every stage, large scale testing is being done. So, and I think in the future, clouds will turn out to be particularly important because they are naturally supporting this type of application. Whether you can actually afford to do it on commercial clouds or it's better, you really need these uh, sort of free cycles from physics uh, clusters, it's not so clear. Now we come to use case 40, the high energy physics experiment, Bell 2. Uh, this is a uh, only involves 400 physicists and engineers. It's uh, in Japan at Tsuba, and whereas LHC is accelerating protons and antiprotons, this is accelerating positrons and electrons, the antiparticles, of course, of each other. And when E plus and E minus uh, collide, they, among other things, can be run at an energy where they have a very enhanced production of the B meson. The B meson is made from a B quark combined with Conventional quarks, uh, U bar and D bar, up, up and down quarks in the antiparticles. And uh, it has very high intensity because it's very specialized and optimized for this particular. It's nowhere near the total energy of the LHC. But, uh, and also because of that, the uh, data analysis is somewhat simpler because fewer particles are produced. But it has to be done highly accurately because they're looking at small effects called CP violation which has a very subtle effect in the interaction between the uh, particles, particles of high energy physics. So this is uh, currently running the Bell accelerator. This will become Bell 2 with an upgrade. And um, that starts in 2015 with a factor of 50 increased data. They expect to get 120 petabytes. And um, actually here we see the Monte Carlo ratio is 100 petabytes to 15 petabytes of physics data. They want to be able to take the data in Japan and basically transfer it continuously to the US. And uh, they have, uh, there in the US they were using the so-called Open Science Grid, GM4 and Dirac and FTS and Bell 2 are pieces of software. And uh, this has, um, what is its characteristics, is MR stat. Because that's the way when you do physics analysis, you're doing large scale statistics, histograms, that's MR stat. Parallel pro PP, pro pleasingly parallel processing, that's because each event is processed in, in, on its own. Well, Monte Carlo MC, that's the Monte Carlo data. We notice that's um, uh, six times as big as the uh, actual raw data. And the parallelism is over collisions, whether those collisions be real collisions or simulated collisions.